the welcome for coming to this uh, health talk. Um, Dr. Antonella Grima is a public health specialist and registered nutritionist. And today we're going to discuss irritable bowel syndrome. What is irritable bowel syndrome? Or yes, ideas? Um, uh, irritable bowel syndrome is a combination of different uh, symptoms. Um, it might be diarrhea, it might be constipation, there might be bloating, sometimes heartburn is involved as well, um, passing too much wind. And uh, together, they are classified as irritable bowel syndrome. There are different categories. Um, it might be that a per the same person goes through different phases of irritable bowel syndrome in their life. They might suffer from constipation at a point, diarrhea at another, um, and a mixed pattern at another point. And usually the diagnosis is reached through elimination and by checking for other things, like for example, celiac disease or inflammatory bowel disease, or maybe other, other sinister conditions like cancer and everything is ruled out, then the diagnosis that remains usually is irritable bowel syndrome. And as you said, it, it affects a lot of people and many people are undiagnosed and they're not aware that they are suffering from IBS. And that most probably is because of the severity, right, of this in yes. itself. If it is, if it is not very severe, usually they um, dismiss it as normal. But in fact, there are a lot of things that can be done to address even mild irritable bowel syndrome. Yes, it's, and it's interesting that some individuals actually, they like sometimes I have diarrhea, sometimes I have constipation. It's like changes even within the same individual. Yes. So yes, yeah, so, so it's a little bit of a of an issue because um, it also symptoms actually change. Yes, and this is not very predictable. Um, sometimes that is the most upsetting factor because one cannot predict how their gut is going to react to triggers. And it's very upsetting for them to not be able to control how their body reacts as well. But what causes this yes. IBS? The actual um, cause as at the moment is not very clear. However, there are quite a few theories as to what may uh, be behind irritable bowel syndrome. And um, one of the theories is that uh, the colon of the people who suffer is more sensitive. So it would uh, react more by having more spasms rather than normal bowel movements. And this would react, uh, this, this would in turn cause um, bouts of diarrhea, for example, or pain in, in, the, in the intestines. Um, another possible theory is that there is an imbalance in the uh, hormones and the chemicals that are produced in, in the gut, like serotonin, for example, and gastrin, um, and the communication between the brain and the gut might not be functioning um, as would normally be expected. So even, for example, if there is stress, um, the gut responds in a heightened way and, uh, and it uh, has a reflection on, on symptoms of IBS then. Yeah, we can um, also experience that when we have to go for a public speaking, for instance. Yes, we immediately and we feel, some... <laughs> we feel butterflies. <laughs> so that is, um, that is what normally happens, but in people who suffer from IBS, the reaction is exaggerated. Um, there is also another theory which is gaining a lot of... Uh, popularity even with, with backing research um, regarding the imbalance between the bacteria and the gut. And in fact, you can um, go into much, much further detail on this yourself. Yeah, of course, we've been uh, giving health talks since November on this particular subject. And yeah, also, we, we, we find that this imbalance is extremely important in terms of various aspects of gut health. Um, and of course, that would result in various syndromes and also eventually diseases, as we um, explained previously, and we also will explain in more detail during this uh, health talk in terms yes, of irritable bowel syndrome, of course. And another, um, another possible uh, explanation is since IBS, it happens in men as well, but it is much more common in women. It might have to do as well with the hormonal cycles and the fluctuations in the hormones that happen um, in, a, in a woman um, during, during her cycle. So that's another possible theory. Obviously, men are not... Um, uh, uh, 
immune to IBS, but it happens less often. And there are other theories, like for example, in fact, even with COVID, we've found that uh, um, COVID can trigger um, IBS symptom, symptoms and the same with other viruses. So uh, the, the causes of, of IBS are quite, quite a few and quite varied as well. Interestingly, you mentioned the, at the beginning, you mentioned the sensitivity. Is it, uh, do you think it's related to the level of uh, inflammation? Because we've been uh, discussing inflammation in terms of chronic inflammation mm -hmm. not, not being resolved due to also chemicals that are produced by the bacteria. So we've been looking into various yes. aspects of this. Yes, definitely. In fact, when uh, when there's inflammation going on and the mucus lining is thin, and uh, as you said, chemicals that might not make it through um, the gut would uh, find themselves in, and, and the other way around, um, uh, chemicals that should remain inside actually find themselves um, in the gut lumen, and obviously even pathogens are more likely to go inside, and uh, and the same with uh, um, loss of uh, of nutrients. So it's it's very complex, and uh, definitely inflammation plays a role um, both in in IBS and even with anxiety, which is related to to IBS very closely. Exactly, exactly, and uh, we've been also providing information during these health talks. On the importance of resolvents, for instance, because we really need to resolve uh, inflammation in the gut, and that is associated with dysbiosis, which is the bacterial imbalance, but also with uh, lipid profile imbalances, which, of course, resolvents are produced by specific lipids like the omega trees. Of course, then the uh, the, the 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 whoever is having these symptoms, you know. Of course, their question would be, what can we do? Yes, and in fact, um, uh, there's always something that can be done for irritable bowel syndrome. It is not a life sentence, and uh, with a bit of time and patience, um, uh, a solution can be found in most, if not all, cases. Um, one of the uh, easiest um, interventions to do is to modify the diet and identify triggers that might uh, be causing these symptoms. And in fact, there is a diet that is called the low FODMAP diet, where foods that ferment and are more likely to cause problems in our gut are eliminated for a period and then reintroduced in a gradual way in order to identify possible uh, um, triggers. And the FODMAPs include gluten, for example, lactose or even dairy at times um, and then common foods like apples onions garlic um, processed meats for example and those are very often found in our diet and sometimes people might not be aware um, that they are being exposed to food maps quite often during their day so that's the first step um, and usually going for a cleaner more natural diet is one of uh, the easiest things to uh, to, to do when it comes to interventions. Probiotics play a very important role and uh, there are different probiotics for different kinds of IBS and different symptoms. I, I mainly focus on prebiotics and then focus on probiotics because yes. prebiotics are extremely important. And so they're the precursors for, for our gut uh, microbiota. So it's very important that we have the right prebiotics in our diet. Sometimes those who suffer from IBS might not be able to handle prebiotics so well at the initial stages when they are still having quite severe symptoms. But then once their gut is more under control, um, they can be reintroduced in their diet with uh, very good results as well. And obviously there is um, the other very important aspect, which is coping with stress and finding ways to uh, um, let it out of our body through meditation, yoga, walking, for example. There are a lot of different uh, um, things that we can do in order to help calm our mind and in turn, calm down our, our gut. It's very, very important to, to tackle that as well. Okay, yeah, that's very, very interesting information. And actually, if we had to sort of list down what are the important things to take care of, Therefore, uh, it's actually the, the diet. Mm. There's also an, other aspect to reduce anxiety, to reduce stress. It's very easily said, um, but 
there are strategies it's, it's that as one, important yeah. as, as all the other aspects exactly and then you find like also aspects which are very simple you know which are uh, for instance if you're going to eat just sit down eat slowly make sure that all the enzymes throughout your gastrointestinal tract are Enough working time to react <laughs> <laughs> you know That's but it. this is also very important it's just simple things that can be can can be that, that are advised yeah, the people would really need to, and this is in general, not only for those who suffer That's with it. irritable bowel syndrome, actually. And of course, I would like to always stress that um, I always say, let's test, let's look, let's measure, and let's act on it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we also have things that we cannot see, like this bacterial imbalance, which is important to really look into. And and it's a very important aspect of restoration of our gut health. So thank you very much for thank this you. intervention. It was a really pleasure having you. Thank you very much, Dr. Thanks. Thanks.